In 2017, I reviewed a portable power bank from a Chinese company called Chaifan that had reached out to me. I didn't know anything about them, and this was one of my first power banks, or generators, or whatever other 10 names people use for these devices. Basically, it's a device that combines a lithium battery pack with a built-in AC inverter, various DC outputs, and sometimes a few other bells and whistles such as solar power charging or car battery jump starting. Anyway, it did decent in my testing even though it was a little bit overrated on the capacity, so I figured it should be a useful tool for the future, and I completed my review video. However, within six months, the product was no longer available on Amazon. Then I started noticing what looked like identical units with the same case, but slightly different colors and specs showing up under different brand names, such as Iusni and Pinti. They even have the same flashlight at the top, so it isn't just a similar case with different internals. Anyways, it's been about three years since then, and I've accumulated quite a few other power banks, and I charge them up periodically to keep them fresh for a power outage. But a few months ago, before a major thunderstorm, I was charging them all up, and the Chafon unit died. It looked like it charged just fine, but when I went to turn it on, it wouldn't activate power to the AC receptacles or any of the outputs. I tried everything I could think of to resuscitate it, and then I just threw it back in the box disgusted. Other than the initial testing for my review video, I'd never even used the device. Just charged it up maybe six or eight times at most, and it was already dead. So, since it's trash anyway, I decided to take it apart and figure out what happened and I figured that some of you might be interested in seeing what's inside one of these things and curious like I am about what happened to it. After inspecting the case, it's clear that they don't intend for you to ever take this apart. There's a plastic sticker that covers most of the screws that connect the front and back faces that you can't access without destroying the sticker. Maybe that's meant to void the warranty if they see that the sticker's been removed, I don't know. But with the company being that shady, they probably don't honor warranties anyway. Once I cracked open the case, I saw some good signs and some bad signs. The battery pack is well wrapped and is in fact lithium ion, which I was wondering about a little bit. But it was held down by some straps that were clearly bent by hand and screwed in with some wood screws at an angle. And it just doesn't look like a well engineered product. I don't see any mechanical relief or strain relief or other details that show that the manufacturer cared much about longevity or quality. Anyway, I removed the battery to do some testing in order to narrow down the sources of the failure. Once again, you can see these odd aluminum straps that were clearly installed by hand by a five-year-old. When I tested the battery, it confirmed that it was definitely the issue. Out of some of the leads, I could get a reading of around 8 volts, but from the others, I got absolutely nothing. So it was time to dig a bit further and crack open the battery pack. I removed the two layers of plastic and saw that it did in fact have a BMS. I was starting to wonder if they'd cut a corner by not having a BMS at all. The circuit board of the BMS was a little bit warped for some reason, but didn't have any obvious signs of scorching or broken connections. But that doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't the source of the problem. Here you can see what looks like the manufacture date, which is not good at all for a product sold in December 2017. After completely disassembling the battery pack and still not seeing any short circuits or obvious signs of damage, I was still scratching my head. So I tested the voltage of each of the 36 lithium ion cells individually. The battery pack was wired in a 3S 12P configuration, which meant there were three strings of 12 parallel 18650 cells wired in series. That configuration, along with the results of my voltage testing, revealed the problem. 12 of the cells showed 4.1 volts, Another 12 showed 4.0 volts, and the final 12 showed only about 0.3 volts. So clearly the BMS was not doing its job in balancing the cells during the charging phase. To confirm that 12 of the cells weren't just bad, even though that would be statistically nearly impossible, I grabbed one of the ones that showed 0.3 volts and tried to recharge it. But the voltage was so low that my more sophisticated battery charger wouldn't even recognize that it was there so I had to use a lower tech charger. Oh well, as long as it gets the job done. I let it run overnight outside where it wouldn't burn my house down if it really was damaged or something, and sure enough it was back to over 4 volts in the morning. Clearly the cells were fine and it was the BMS that was the problem. Another fun issue I discovered is that the Chafon was supposed to be rated at 346 watt hours from the factory, but based on the 2400 milliamp hour rating of the individual cells, 
By my math, the battery pack was really only capable of about 311 watt hours. But I'm not a professional battery pack builder, so please correct me if I'm wrong. But I think it's pretty accurate, because that's a lot closer to the real world testing that I did in my review video back in 2017. Anyway, the mystery solved. And we all learned that Chafon produces junk products along with all the other brands that this same power bank is sold under. Thanks for watching this video. Please hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed watching.